Now, it's all about education, of course, as well, and higher education has become a flashpoint in the American culture wars and a prime target for government downsizers. So it was no surprise when West Virginia University announced plans to slash majors and cut courses in order to shrink its budget. But what does that actually mean for the students who are seeking a reasonably priced education? Atlantic magazine writer Michael Powell joins Michelle Martin to discuss his latest article, What Happens When a Poor State Guts Its Public University? Thanks, Christiane. Michael Powell, thanks so much for talking with us. Oh, my pleasure. So you decided to take a deeper look at the big cuts implemented at West Virginia University, uh, cuts to language programs, math programs, a bunch of degree-granting programs. What made you take a look at it? I was struck when it came out that, um, I, I mean, of course, like everybody, by the breadth and depth of the cuts, um, but also that, you know, I mean, I'm familiar enough with West Virginia to know, I mean, this is a kind of a working class um, state um, that's had, you know, all sorts of um, problems. I mean, you know, diabetes, drug use, a rapidly aging population, loss of youth. And this felt um, like a, you know, I mean, it, it, I guess in that way, it felt like a deep blow and, and something worth really looking at. And also because you're hearing increasingly of both uh, public and private colleges that are making these sort of um, very deep cuts. And I guess lastly, I mean, because it is, there are so many kind of first generation and working class students at this place. It, I thought it did raise interesting questions of, um, of equity. You know, what happens um, when a school that, that serves the kind of larger sweep of America or of, or of West Virginia makes these sort of cuts? What happens to opportunities? So the thing that got a lot of people's attention is the cuts to the language programs. The really shrinking the modern language department to the point where most people won't be able to get an advanced degree in those languages is that's kind of the reality of it. But what are some of the other cuts that perhaps didn't get as much attention initially? I mean, there was pu public health, there was graduate programs in math, there are graduate programs in conservation management. Um, education, um, administration, English uh, took some cuts. One of the things that I was kind of struck by is they literally could not uh, offer Shakespeare classes this um, spring, you know, either in either the fall or the spring semester, because they were too uh, too badly stretched. So I mean, these these cuts, you know, kind of extended over a pretty broad broad range of areas. So you actually had a chance to interview the president of West Virginia University, E. Gordon G. Um, he talked about this back in 2020. He kind of laid out his goal here. And I do want to mention that, uh, that he has a pretty extensive background in university uh, administration. I mean, he's led, you know, marquee institutions like Ohio State, uh, Brown. He's, he's, he's been around. So what is it that he said was wrong that this strategy is designed to fix. His argument is that there is this uh, demographic cliff that universities are approaching in the next couple of years. Uh, that is where you see declining birth rate and fewer kids of uh, college age. So you're going to see fewer and fewer of them applying to universities and that this is going to lead to a real, his favorite word is existential crisis uh, for higher education. He also points to um, polls both nationally and in within West Virginia that show declining confidence uh, by the citizenry at large in the the need for uh, higher education. Um, you know, the, where it used to be in the, say, mid 60s, 70 percent. Now, I think he points to polls that show it as low as like 25, 30 percent. Uh, and he says, look, you know, the, the, the combination of these things require, you know, if you will, a tsunami that's approaching. We need to get ready for that um, and and therefore that we need to both cut 
And at the same time, we need to kind of serve, as he, he loves to talk about his, his students and families as customers, that we have to kind of customize the education uh, for them. So we don't want to have as many required courses. We want to be able to let them take other courses. We want more and this is where it gets a little contradictory at the same time, kind of targeted on health, uh, business, engineering, uh, things that will, he says, um, serve the economy of West Virginia. You know, we've heard lots of criticisms of universities in, in recent years that they're too expensive, that they don't serve the economy's needs, that they are elitist, you know, that they basically are they're doing too much. Are, are Mr. G's, or President G's objections that there's a market mismatch, that, that, that students are coming out unprepared for the opportunities that exist and that that's a problem? Or is it, is it that it, primarily economic, that the state can't afford it? Or is it primarily ideological, that he doesn't like what the kids are t teaching or coming out and thinking? He certainly does not frame it in ideological terms. He argues a bit of a mismatch. Um, he's talked a lot about the need to keep these students um, in in state, um, and you know, and to match them up better with uh, with jobs in the state. It gets a little confusing because at some point, I mean, West Virginia's economy is in a bad way. Um, it lacks, you know, basic. I mean, there's a great shortage of math teachers, which makes it rather ironic that they're cutting their math program back. Um, there's, you know, there's a shortage of biology teachers. I mean, there's there's shortages kind of a, across the board, and it seems to me within a place like West Virginia, certainly this is something that critics talk about. Is it's great to try as much as one can to keep students in state. But at some level, if you're, again, serving the needs of those, those kids, you're going to allow their aspirations to take them where they might. And as one of the young women that I was talking to um, who's, you know, looking, wants to work for the Foreign Service, uh, and she took a lot of language, you know, a lot of language study, a lot of foreign study, you know, maybe she does leave. Maybe she comes back 20 years, 30 years from now and teaches at, you know, WVU. I guess what I was struck by looking at is it's not so linear, right? It's not like, well, you know, if we come up with a way to keep this young person here now at the age of 21, they'll be here when they're 50, or if they go away when they're 21, they won't come back in 15 or 20 years if there are the opportunities there. So obviously you're skeptical of his approach, but let's sort of take it at face value. He says that, that the this is a public university. It depends on public dollars, and it just needs to be in better alignment with the needs of the state and to be a better steward of the state's resources. I mean, you point out in your piece that, you know, most state legislatures are spending less per student than a decade ago. Um, throughout higher education, total student enrollment is declining. So doesn't, doesn't he have a point there? Well, he might. I mean, the, the, the thing is that actually state universities, um, flagship universities in particular, are actually better positioned than a lot of privates. I mean, if you wanted to, if I did the same piece on a good, small, little private university in West Virginia or in, in anywhere else, they might well be facing kind of existential problems, right? They don't have the endowments of an Ivy League school or a Stanford or something like that, their tuition runs 65, 75,000 a year. You know, there you've got a real problem. West Virginia University, you can still go soup to nuts for about 22,000 a year. It's one of the lowest, and that is that includes room and board. So that, that's one of the lower um, price tags, in fact, perhaps the very lowest for a state university in the country. One could counter that actually a state university like West Virginia, like Kentucky, which is a neighbor next door, like Ohio, which is a neighbor next door, where they've seen increasing enrollment, um, that those places are sort of uniquely well positioned to survive a, you know, a, a, a demographic and enrollment uh, decline nationally. Some of the programs that are being cut would seem to be ones that the state actually does need. I mean, you've pointed out that made, he made deep cuts to the math 
department, but the, there's a shortage of math teachers in the state, as there is really in most places around the country. So that's one thing. But then also in educational administration, I mean, education is another thing that the state really needs. But the other thing that you pointed out is this this, this little quirky program in puppetry, which that you 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 know took pains to highlight, and you said that they've had a hundred percent postgraduate employment going back. For years, and that some of these uh, the, the graduates go on to work at you know major companies like entertainment and Disney and all these other sort of places. So one of the sources of skepticism that I detected from your piece is that you thought, well, gee, if you really want to match sort of the need with the the educational experience, that would seem to be some of that would be counterintuitive. Presumably, you put that question to President G. What did he say? He keeps saying that look, these are the sort of tough choices we have to make. I kept looking for it to hold together. So wait a minute. You know, we're, we're cutting, we're trying to aim at, for instance, meeting the needs of West Virginia. Fine. I mean, uh, it's a um, economically, you know, kind of storm-tossed state. It needs help. But again, so you're, you're, you want to increase your engineering program. Uh, that he wants to wants to put money into that he wants to he's putting big money into a neuroscience center but at the same time he's cutting his math graduate program um I, you know and 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 there's an interplay between those and if you're a if you're a top neuroscience student um and and there's a lot of competition uh, you know from schools that are in um you know major cities and that sort of thing it seems to me paradoxical that you would cut programs that are if you will kind of cousin or adjacent programs uh and and i didn't I didn't really get a good answer for, uh, from him on that. Talk about sort of your skepticism for a, a, a bit. What do you really think is going on here? Like you, 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 you kind of, this is, there's, a, there's the subtext to this. And what do you think the subtext is? Is it that, that he, this sort of a suspicion that, you know, th this is not for you? That you're, you know, as a, if you grow up in West Virginia, if you go to school there, then you're not supposed to have nice things. I mean, what's, you, you know, I mean, What's what's the subtext here? Yeah, I think that is the implicit question. There is well, what are we saying? So if you're at the if you're born in Los Angeles or San Francisco and you have you can access the University of California system, which is you know a, a pretty magnificent educational uh, edifice. I mean, it has its problems, but it, it's a you know it it offers a great buffet of, of courses and schools to go to. And if you're from West Virginia, you're going to have a greatly telescoped um, um, sort of set of choices. And I do think that that raises real questions. I mean, if this is public, you know, the, the public university system, and I'm myself a product of it, um, is a, you know, is a, I think is one of our one of our glories. And it's not been um so class stratified, right? Where I mean the, the notion is that if you go to a state university, you can get, you can feel your brain come afire. And I think that it's it's worth worrying um when a state university system, as President Guy is, you know has done and here has decided to kind of well pull in its fangs I mean, and i guess that was one of the things that's striking you know west virginia right now is a very large budget uh surplus um you know why not put some of that you know some of that energy into getting a little bit more money so that you get you know from the from the state legislature take your case to the people and try to sell them on what is a great american ideal which is the land grant university a place where you don't have to be rich uh or upper middle class to get um to get a you know to really have a chance to getting a fine education and a fine education in a way of, you know, and again, I was struck in talking to a number of these first generation students that, you know, they came there thinking, oh, I'm going to major in something practical. You know, I'm going to be a, a business or this or that. And like all of a sudden they got there and like they realized, oh, linguistics, you know, that that rocks my world. Well, it so happens linguistics also is very much in demand in AI right now. 
it seemed to me in a very moving way, kind of the best opportunities that a public education can offer middle and working class kids. So presumably you put that question to the president and like, what do you think it's really about? He's long written about this demographic cliff. I think he sees himself um, as a visionary. I know he sees himself as a visionary. And that when all of these other state universities are having problems, um, West Virginia uh, University, after he will have left, because he's going to leave in the next year or two, he says, um, will be positioned to survive in a very kind of practical and utilitarian way. Um, maybe. The problem is, I mean, when I looked at University of Kentucky, when I looked at the University of Arkansas, places with pretty similar demographic profiles to that of West Virginia, their enrollment is is soaring. Uh, I mean, they're they're adding classes, they're adding professors. So, if nothing else, I guess he's um, he's made a petri dish of West Virginia University. Um, in that, we're going to see if you know if this works. Um, you know, I th in the short run, I think it leaves students with um, some hollowed out programs. Does this go beyond? West Virginia University. Do you think there's a bigger issue out here that we should be thinking about that West Virginia University just exemplifies as opposed to is kind of the whole story? Is there a bigger story out here that we should be thinking about? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, I think there's been there's been a lot of obviously incoming fire directed at um, universities in the last 10 or 15 years, both from left and right, actually. Um, and, you know, and I, and I think those are, I mean, that is the, if you will, sort of the, the overarching, uh, you know, umbrella under which some of this, some of what's going on in West Virginia um, is going for, forward with. And you are seeing, I don't want to make it entirely about West Virginia. I mean, you have a university, State University of New York at Potsdam and far northern New York that's made some, you know, very, very um, uh, deep cuts in programs, cut out all sorts of what would have been thought of as essential majors. You've seen this in North Dakota. You've seen it in Missouri. Um, so you have you have a real challenge there. And you also have a challenge, I think, in getting, as alluded to, you, the, you have a challenge in getting... Um, parents and citizens of, of the of these states to understand the value uh, of a college education. And I guess that's what um, I'm struck by. One of, one of the things I'm struck by in West Virginia is that from the president to the governor, to the head of the legislatures, to the provost, everyone's just sort of taking it. <laughs> you know, the, the starting point is we We've lost the confidence of people. We're not going to get that. Enrollment's going to decline. And, and therefore, we need to kind of manage decline. And we need to manage decline with a few sharp programs there. And that seems to me to represent, both in West Virginia and in some of these other states, a real, um, a real pressing issue. Michael Powell, thanks so much for talking with us. Thanks very much.